It's, I'm feeling quite bad this morning about the shooting in Arizona, in Tucson. Uh, I live in a complex where there's a lot of young, quite a lot of young men who are chronically mentally ill, who are deemed uh, stable enough to live in a complex, but a lot of times this doesn't prove to be the case. and. So these young men, uh, wait a minute. These young men uh, start exhibiting violence or some other, un some unacceptable behavior. Not here. Oh yeah. Of you consider somebody fifty years old to be a young man? Uh, uh, well, most of them, a, a number of them, have not been fifty. They've been in their forties. You know, like the. I had a uh, young man who was really actually terrorizing me for about a year because he lived so close to me and he was definitely very unstable and just didn't know when he was going to exhibit some kind of violent behavior that was frankly terrifying. And uh, there were so many complaints about him that finally he left before he could be evicted and it was going, you know, it takes quite a process to evict someone like this. However, if uh, a chronic mentally ill person exhibits too much violence, then they will immediately, they will be taken to a psych ward and evaluated and possibly, now we just recently we had a young man who, now Greg, you know, Greg wasn't 50. He was probably in his 30s, late 30s. And Ooh. Greg, you know, that lived right here on your, your floor, uh, he's not been back, but he has taken away a couple of three times. Were they trying to adjust his medication, convince him, you know, that he had to contain his, and he just couldn't do it, you know. And I understand the shooter in Arizona, in Tucson, uh, one of the classmates said that in class he would burst out with some nonsensical sort of, you know, it was obviously quite deranged and this is very typical of what happens, like Greg would come out and he might look at you and start saying something a little bit disturbing <laughs> and uh, well, nonsensical. Let's, let's hope he doesn't see this because uh, well, Greg's not he knows here where anymore. you live and he knows where <laughs> yeah. I live. I yeah. wish you would change the names to like Harvey Dipshits or something <laughs> like that, you know? Mm. But anyway... Uh, is that an outburst? Was that an outburst? Yeah, this is, this is another <laughs> deranged person that lives here. So you'll have to well, excuse you him. Man, he is, uh, he, he'll probably say inappropriate things, just like... And, you know, as a registered Democrat and uh, oh, geez, a, also a pro-life Democrat, I have to go back and say, um, I think something like this calls for very intense examination from both both parties into what kind of rhetoric and what kind of uh, behavior uh, they support within the party, uh, they tolerate. And if there's a big acceleration of crazy, bigoted, violent behavior, uh, this, you know, this creates an atmosphere where things like this can happen, as happened with the shooting of Congresswoman Giffords, and the killing of a judge who was there, who I understand was a Republican, but he was a friend of uh, <coughs> a, a Congresswoman woman Giffords, who's Democrat, and. Uh, but he had just dropped by to talk to her. And then, of course, we had a little nine-year-old girl that was shot in the Malay. So it's really a very grim uh, event to try to consider and uh, evaluate and try to figure out what we can do. It's something that I, you dread, I've dreaded, uh, that could happen in an atmosphere of, well, instability. And this young man, I uh, 
from what I can read of him, uh, was a loner, he, uh, they said, and, uh, well, he's just so typical of so many young men who, who've been in the news doing something like this. Uh, and I'm saying, I have to go back and say, that when I say examine every single violent thing that we endorse in our society, I have to go back to legalized abortion as an extremely violent solution that uh, and what's dis what's upsetting about this is ever since uh, it was uh, legalized through the Supreme Court, not really through the consensus of the people, uh, the press immediately started trying to find justification for, for it in, I thought, unprecedented behavior. I mean, this caused me to lose a lot of faith in the integrity of the press that they would go to bat for anything if it was going to cost them anything, if it was going to risk their jobs in any way whatsoever. Uh, they were going to jump on the bandwagon of whatever was now legal. And so I think that the press, but we've come to think of it, and most pro-life activists agree nationally that the press is the enemy as far as pro-life is concerned. That they have supported abortion and they have never... Uh, gone and maybe that's asking too much that when you've got something legal uh for the press to oppose it and keep on opposing it after it's once law maybe that's asking too much but if we're going to fix this if we're going to take a violent solution like legalized abortion which amounts to one million one million deaths a year and we're just going to ignore it, we're just going to act like, oh, that doesn't even exist, that we don't have to consider that, then we're not really getting it. What is violent? What is, that is far more violence than we ever had before. Far more. And so we have to, we have to ask the, the press, too, to be accountable. Uh, it's like the press is not going to recognize any kind of opposition to this, unless they're forced to. They're not going to do it internally. I mean, my paper today, of course, doesn't even, uh, never does. It's a pro-choice paper. And uh, I, I just wonder how all of these journalists could all of a sudden be pro-choice uh, without, and never question it. And it's all left up to uh, the Republican and a lot of times the Republicans aren't strong on this subject for the same reasons, that they'd have to take a risk, they'd have to... Now I want to tell you that uh, this year, in December, a baby was born in our family who did not weigh three pounds. The baby was not even seven months long. It was six months long, over, but not seven. And, well, it was so harrowing. Uh, but the baby is in a preemie unit and the baby is, the mother is living close by so she can uh, give breast milk because that's considered uh, absolutely necessary for a preemie to thrive. And she is going to have to do this for two or three months until the baby is five pounds. The baby is now just barely got back to three pounds. But we look at this baby, he's moving and he opens his eyes and closes them and, you know, they come in and they're there uh, looking at him. And no expense is going to be spared to, to save this baby. Uh, this baby's a precious little child to this parent. But yet, in this country, that baby could be legally killed at the age it is. It can be legally killed in the womb up to nine months because it, I suppose it was too hard to decide when a baby uh, could be killed. So it's legal up to nine months and this is why uh, Tiller of, of Kansas, Dr. Tiller was maligned because 
He was willing to do late-term abortions on children that were obviously, obviously, able, probably able to, to live outside the womb. And yet, if we can't call this killing, murder, what are we? Uh, what kind of people are we? That we're going to, you know, women were sold the idea that this was a woman's right to choose. Well, that's ridiculous. A woman's right to choose to kill their own children. Uh, that ordinarily in nature, a mother is thought of as to protect that child with everything they have. Every instinct they've got should go toward protecting their children. And there was, and I would say the press, uh, the apologists for abortion, have sold the idea to women that this somehow has something to do with their right to choose. Well, for heaven's sakes, everybody's got the right to choose what kind of behavior to have pr prior to pregnancy. Uh, you can choose what you do. This is the area, this is the time to choose after the baby is conceived. It's not the time to choose because you're going to have to go to a drastic, violent, violent solution. And I can't emphasize that enough because when you raise children, say as this young troubled man, and you don't think that these children get the message that their lives aren't very valuable to the point that one third of every, all the children that are conceived in this country are aborted. One third, that means one third of all the children that were conceived since 1973 have been aborted. That means that all kinds of talented, whatever children, they, they've all, they're all gone. And if you don't think that doesn't send a message to the young, and you don't think that they're not able to, to compute this, just because the press is not willing to compute it, they're not willing to mention it, we still have young people who, in a confused, they may be a very confused sort of way, they uh, express their dismay, their upset, their, and, and this can come out in all kinds of ways, in drug abuse, uh, rebellious behavior, parents not being able to control their children, because parents too are getting the message, well, your child, you know, you can abort this child, I mean, uh, if you choose to keep it, okay. Uh, but if you abort it, there will be no, no punishment. Uh, 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 and you shouldn't even feel a qualm. Because this is what it means to support the woman's right to choose. Which has come to mean support legalized abortion. And you know, we got women themselves coming, wanting to believe this. Tempted, tempted, tempted to think that it doesn't matter if you choose a very violent solution <coughs> to a big problem. <coughs> so when we go to, to delve into all the causes of crimes like this, we've got to consider them all, not just hate mongers, gun, gun nuts, all the people that we know we have to fear like just in this place. We know we have to fear violent, violent mental patients. We do. And, uh, yes, here, he's roaring here. He tries to put a little levity into. Would you, would you wrap this up, please? <laughs> yeah. we say well, and, then he, and he's a Democrat here, okay? who, who now, just goes along, goes along. I don't mind if you along. put this on your See, chair, this is, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. I Jesus. certainly wouldn't. See, he's one of these that, uh, he's the drugger, the drinker, you know, the one that falls into, uh, well, anything goes. I mean, Wait a don't, minute, I yes, don't do yes. drugs. No, but drinking is equivalent. What it does to the brain is equivalent. So I'm going to end on this note, but I had to, I had to talk about it because of my connection as a protester, as a pro-life Democrat, 
as someone who lives in a complex with many, the chronically mentally ill, which I know are a big problem. Young men like this, who did this terrible killing. What about us old 